All right, in chapter one, the first section, we look at what's called categorical data. Uh, as we move in through chapter one, we'll also run into quantitative data. Now, how we know the difference between the two is how my data is collected. Am I collecting numbers or am I collecting words? And when I mean collecting words, it's like when I answer a question in the survey, am I answering do I fit into a certain type of word, a category? Okay, common types of categories you're going to see. Number one is very common to see gender, okay, a male or female, okay, color of a car, okay, red, gray, black, uh, age range, okay, it's made up of numbers, but now we're talking do you fall in the 5 to 10 year old group, the 11 to 15 year old group, so on and so forth, so you fall in the groups or categories. Now the other thing that we can talk about when we get into quantitative is Quantitative, you're able to do algebraic operations with, like find a mean, um, so things like that. So when we look at data, again, a lot of things that we want, or where we want to start is always by looking at some type of a graph or a plot so we can see what's going on. And so, as you notice here, what we're talking about, the category is what radio station do you prefer to listen to? Okay, so there's my data. People fall into different categories. Number one, we always got to figure out my total. Okay, so I talked to a total of 8,684 people, of which, you know, those numbers fell into different categories. Okay, and what we're going to do is, with categor categorical data, is find out what percent falls into each category. So my next step would be to divide out the 86, 84 t from each of my values. Okay, and what I'm going to find out is that this is about 18%, and continuing down, 24, 23, 10, 25. Okay. Now, when we display graphs, one of the methods I can use is what's called a pie chart or a pie graph or a circle chart, okay, a number of different names for it. What I want to do is figure out, because circles, remember, from geometry are 360 degrees, is what part of that circle has to fall to con adult contemporary. So I need to know the measure of my central angle. And again, central angle is an angle that has its vertex at the center, and radii for its side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 18%, so 0.18 of, so times the 360 degrees, needs to be dedicated to adult contemporary. So about 65 degrees. 24% okay. of the 360 degrees has to go to country, and so on and so forth. Okay. And so we'll get these values at that point. Now, a couple things I can do. When I check, obviously these should add up to about 100%. And this should be about 360. There might be some round off error here and there, okay, but we should be all right. Now, it doesn't matter where you start, but I usually will start in standard position, okay, which is about 3 o'clock, and I'll estimate 65 degrees. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, we get the protractor out and measure it and all that, but just be close. Now, always label what that region represents, so that's adult contemporary, and what percent of it. Okay. Now, you could turn your circle if you want. Okay. Oops, didn't want to quite do it that way. Got to group them up first. Okay. And then get that in the start position again, or just kind of estimate again, because my next one's 86 degrees, which is almost a right angle. Okay. So that's your country which again was about 24%. Okay. And then you get about 83%, so again, a little shy of a right angle is religious. So 23%. Okay. Rock is about 36 degrees, so a smaller one. But again, it's because it's only 10%. And then your remaining part is the news and talk radio, which is about a right angle here, so pretty close. Okay. So 25%. Okay. Another thing we should always do with our charts and our graphs is label what it is. And this is radio stations preferred. Okay. So that's one way we can display categorical data. Okay. Second way is a bar graph or a bar chart. And so when we put this together, What I'm going to do is put each of my categories down here on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to have my 12 to 17-year-old category. 
okay, 18 to 24 year old category, 25 to 34. Now, if they're colors, genders, whatnot, I would do the same thing. So the words go on the bottom, okay. Now, on the vertical axis, I'm going to put my frequency. Sometimes there'll be a count. In this case, we're told a percent. Okay. So I got to go to at least 54 percent. Okay. And so one of the things I'll do is I'm talking percent, so I'm going to label it. We'll get into that more as we start talking about describing some things, but we have to label and table everything. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is simply build a bar. So 54%, estimate about the top is where I like to go and then just build a rectangle down. Okay, 30%. Your top, build the bars down. Now one of the things about a bar graph, in general we don't have the bars touch. Okay, but now what I can see is that that 12 to 17 year old group is the largest group. The 55 and older over is the smallest group. I can see those 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 34 year olds are similar. Also again, what we need to know is what is my graph telling me? So I label it percent that own an MP3 player. Okay. So a couple ways we can deal with that. All right, then we'll get into the idea of what's called a marginal distribution, or I mean a two-way table first. Uh, two-way table, okay. Because we're talking about two variables is what we're looking at, okay. And they're both gonna be categorical. So one of my variables is gender, female or male, okay. The other one is your opinion, okay. Notice we labeled what it is, but it's going two ways. It's going horizontally and vertically, okay, comparing two values. Now, what we'll look at in this situation a couple of times, they'll, they'll bring up the idea of a marginal distribution. And if they talk about a marginal distribution, think about the margins of your paper, okay. Marginal distribution are your totals, okay. So what I can look at, what percent say almost no chance, and that's your 194 out of the 4826. What percent are male, 25 49 out of 48, 26. That's your idea of a marginal distribution. We can also get into a conditional distribution. Okay. And what it does is it shrinks, and we'll talk about this more with probability. My sample space is kind of the idea we're looking at it, getting ahead of ourselves. Shrinks my sample space or those involved. Okay. So the condition may be that I'm only dealing with males. Okay. And so it might be asking what percent of males okay, say 50-50 chance. Well, now what we're looking at is to figure that out. I'm only dealing with the males. That's my condition. Okay. There's only 25, 49 people involved. What percent or what number of them said, you know, 50, 50 chance. So we talk about conditions a lot of times to get your driver's license. You have to pass the classroom. You have to pass the road test. Okay. Condition to vote. You have to be 18. So you have to meet conditions before you get something. Same thing here. My condition is, am I dealing with males? Okay. My condition could be, am I talking about people that said 50, 50 chance? All right, and then the last thing in the section is what we call our four-step process. This is going to be a very big thing when we start getting into um, later sections, when we start getting into inference, which is the, the, the meat and potatoes of uh, statistics. It's four-step process, so we'll start seeing it now. Number one, state. What am I trying to do? Okay. What's my question of interest? And we'll find out as we go along again. That's the big thing. What am I trying to answer here? Okay. Why am I going through and collecting this data? What's the purpose? Okay. Second thing, now since I have this question of interest, how am I going to go about doing it? That's my plan. Okay. What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go collect my data from some people. I'm going to make some graphs. I'm going to analyze some data in terms of numeric values and things like that. Okay. What are some of the things I'm going to use? Techniques. Okay. When we get to inference, it will be the type of uh, test that we're going to run. Okay. Do. 
Well, the big thing with your do is obviously what we're going to do is look at our calculations. Okay, this is where we actually do the mathematics part of our statistics, and then conclude. Okay, well now that I have all these numbers and all this data, what is my conclusion? What do I draw out of it? Now the big thing it says in setting of the real world problem. Okay, my term I like to use is in context of the problem. If I'm looking at something between male and female, you know, who has a higher GPA? My conclusion is, hey, I concluded that the female uh, senior class at Armstrong High School has a higher overall GPA average than the males. Okay, what do we mean here? So that kind of wraps up section 1-1.